everybody, welcome back to another video. In today's video, we are going to be setting up Tula's enclosure. So last video was an enclosure review. Today we're putting it together. So for her background, I'm using these big cork panels. I got two of them. I forget what size they are, two by 18 maybe. Um, but I got two and I cut them to fit in the background of this Oibo terrarium. Again, the last video I did was a review. You can also find the link for the terrarium in the description below. But these cork panels, I thought it would save so much time compared to doing like a spray foam background. And I just really like how they look and it did. It saved so much time. It was fantastic. So once I got them in, I siliconed them down and weighed them down with random things that I found in my house to help it dry and I left it overnight. So the next day once the background was good and secure I started laying out my cork bark. So I've been collecting pieces for my arboreal geckos for their upgrades. I have big pieces that I want to use as like corner trees, as inspired by Alyssa's lizards, and then smaller cork branches. I can't find any online, so I've been making sure to buy some whenever I go to expos. So once I liked how I had it, we laid it out with toothpicks and then I spray foamed in. So this is where I'm missing a lot of footage. This enclosure video has been a long time in the making, so I don't even remember if I filmed the next part or not. So I'm just going to tell you what I did. Here's a picture once the background was all done. So essentially I spray foamed in the cork pieces, shaved them down, I painted them with dry lock with like a brownish to make them kind of match the cork bark if you will. After I did a couple layers of that, the last one while it was wet, I threw on some dirt to make it look more natural, less like painted spray foam. So that's the dirt that you see there. And then once that was all dry, I also threw on some sphagnum moss while it was still wet. But once that was all dry, then I took this green moss and I siliconed it into different places. Um, so that again, it brought in some pops of color, still looked fairly natural though. Alright, today we are putting together Tula's new enclosure. My sister and I, after about half an hour, finally got it up here on the shelf. Had to move some things around in the room, but here it is. So this is a 2 foot by 18 inches by 3 foot glass tank by Oibo. It's kind of like the Exoterra's, but it's white, which is why I really, really wanted it. If you haven't seen my review of this tank or this enclosure, um, you can really watch that and I will link where to get it below. Um, but we're going to go ahead and put it together. It still smells a little bit like silicone from um, adding on the moss and everything, so she won't go in it yet. But we can at least start getting it set up. So we do have this tree in the corner um, and then we've got a branch along the back wall that she can hang on to. We've got this branch that comes off the back and goes to the side to climb on. We have a little V right here. So there's different levels that she can climb on. We're also going to add some very big snake plants that I've been holding on to for months. So she'll be able to climb into those as well. So I'm just very, very excited about this. So my goal with the new builds was to make the animals easily accessible. Um, that's a problem I've been having with programs is a lot of my new enclosures have built-in hides. If the animals are in it, then I am SOL. So I wanted her to have lots of places to hide, climb, but also make it so I could easily get her. So behind this cork is all spray foamed. Behind here, all spray foamed, spray foamed. She can easily hide behind this cork if she doesn't want to see me, but I can still get to her. And then she'll be able to hide in the plants and everything as well. But everywhere she is, she'll be easily accessible. So I'm not going to film it, but first thing I'm going to do is just set up our drainage layer. So I'm going to use some hydro balls and then a screen for the top. Okay, so this is what I just used for my drainage layer. Just these clay pebbles I got from Amazon. I will link them below. And I just use window screen from Walmart. So you can just go right to Walmart to get that. You can probably get some at Home Depot too, but I just get this from Walmart. So I've got my clay ball layer for drainage. I've got my uh, window screen to separate the dirt from the drainage layer. Now we're gonna add some dirt in. So I usually mix tons of different things. But I've got organic topsoil, you can get it from Home Depot, that's the main thing I use in all my enclosures. 
I have some rep there what's this? This is jungle mix. Somewhere I think I have repto soil. But to find it. Um I've got some forest floor, some repto chip. I've got lots of stuff to use. So I like to mix a whole bunch of stuff. Um so it's got lots of different textures and components. And yeah. Alright, dirt is in. We ended up just using topsoil and forest floor. We had plenty because I found another bag of topsoil in the basement. Time to add in the plants. So all I have right now I think is the snake plants. Um, I'm going to gradually add on as time goes on. But right now all I have are snake plants I think. Unless I pull some of my like room plants. I might pull this little vein plant here because it's getting big enough that it looks weird in a pot. So I might pull this vein plant and put it in here. Since I've had it forever I know it's like all quarantined and stuff so I might do that. So I'm ever so slightly regretting my decision to put in an umbrella plant because the whole point of this setup was it was supposed to be easy to find her, get her out for programs. Um, this is gonna make it very, very difficult to find her unless she hangs out like on the cork bark. But I got this, I got one of these, I forget what they're called, um, so that she has some color, cause it was looking a little colorless. So we've got this little pink guy down here, this big guy up here, and then her branches to hang out on, the branch on the back, she's got this umbrella plant to hide in, we've got the big snake plants over here. I'm gonna get some thin lights for the plants to sit on top of here. There's not enough space for me to add heat and UVB yet. That will be when we have the house. But I can put some thin lights up here for the plants at least and to make it a little less dark. The last thing I have to add is this magnetic food dish. Another reason I wanted to stick with glass terrariums for my crested geckos or my arboreal geckos in general. Because I have a lot of magnetic decor. Um, so, yep, I wanted to be able to keep using it. But I got this little food dish. I can easily position it. I don't like suction cup ledges because they keep falling down on me. And yeah, so magnetic food dishes. We're gonna give them a try, but we're gonna add this in. All right, so I'm trying to get her out. She's been in her um, showcase container for like programs, and she's grabbing under my back finger, but she's her tail wrapped around a vine. Clearly, she's not in a hurry to get out. Let's go, Tula, and wrap your tail. Come on. We're almost there. Hi, Tools. Waiting for it to focus. Focus. You're looking a bit chunky. Alright, let's check it out. What do you think? So she's hanging out in her umbrella plant right in there, nice and hidden. Um, seeing her in this, remember this is a 2 foot by 18 inches by 3 foot tall enclosure. Seeing her in this, I don't know how I ever thought a 20 gallon long would be an adult enclosure for an arboreal gecko. Like once I started upgrading animals, I just kept thinking I want bigger, I want bigger, I want bigger. And this looks like the perfect, perfect size for her to spend the rest of her life in. So I can't wait for her to get comfortable enough to utilize the enclosure more. But we'll let her hang out and we'll check back on her later, maybe tonight. See how she's doing. We'll give her some food, see if she comes out to explore more. So I'm super out of practice with filming videos. As you guys know, I haven't been posting very much lately between being short-staffed at work and being in competition season for figure skating. And having just so many videos going on at once with all the upgrades I started doing at Christmas time, I lost track of what I filmed and didn't film. So I do not have an ending film for this video. Uh, however, I will say it has been two months now, a month since Tula went in, and she is absolutely loving her new home, thriving in it. 
She climbs all over. I find her hanging out on the branches. She's eating great. She's loving it. I did also add a plant light. I had an extra one that I found and it did fit in the small space between the top of the enclosure and the ceiling. So the plants do have light. It is lit up in there and I absolutely love it. I still love the enclosure. I would highly recommend it. Link will be below. And with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching. Oh, I do also want to add, I know for Bioactive, you need a cleanup crew. I didn't have a cleanup crew at the time. I did add isopods and springtails, though, to complete the bioactiveness of the whole thing. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching and for being so patient while waiting for me to get this video finished and put out there. Hopefully with the end of the month and no more competitions, I will be able to get back on a schedule and start putting out more content again. So thank you so much for your patience. Thank you guys for watching this video and we'll see you for the next one. Bye.